Even though Juliana Larson's boyfriend knew she was pregnant at the tender age of 16, he abandoned her and their kid. She was at a loss, so she sought advice from her parents. But fate still wasn't on her side, and she was banished from the house until she had an abortion. Juliana was homeless and had no job, so she walked around for a while before she got a job as a waitress. She started putting money away for her delivery and future child, but she soon realized that it wouldn't be enough to give her child a good life. So, after she gave birth, she left her baby with a note on a stranger's doorstep. If you find this note, please don't waste time looking for me. I hope that you will give her a happy life. Please love and care for her as if she were your own, it said. From Juliana Larson How difficult it was for Juliana to turn around and go back to her kid was something she would never forget. But she thought it was for the best, so she didn't. In the years that followed, she was able to achieve nearly all of her goals, including securing a steady career, marrying a kind man, and purchasing a lovely home. She didn't have a child, which she thought was because God didn't bless her with one. She and her husband Peter had been trying for a child for several years without success. They finally decided that each other was enough for them. But one day, fate brought a baby in a brown crocheted basket to her doorway, and that changed everything. As she opened the door, she yelled, Peter! When she saw a beautiful baby girl in a basket, she couldn't believe what she was seeing. She picked her up, and then a note dropped to the floor. A baby? Peter was confused as he walked up to the door. How come? He looked Juliana in the eyes, and for a second, they both thought about how she had left her baby behind. She had never lied to him about her past, and he had always been honest with her. When they found a baby though, they didn't know what to do. Honey, Juliana said, a note is on the floor. I know the person who left the baby here gave it to her. Peter took the note and started reading it, but by the time he was done, Juliana was crying. Hello, dear mother. I hope you get what you deserve for what you did to me and how you left me. Do you think you could leave your daughter behind and still be happy? So, what do you know? I did what you did because I liked what you did. I don't think you have a choice but to raise that kid happily. Rose Smith, your daughter you left behind. Juliana was almost in tears when she got to the door. Honey, what do we do now? If this note is true, this baby is my granddaughter. I'm speechless. Juliana, we can't just keep the baby like that. We have to tell the police. But honey, we know who the mother is and we can try to find her and ask her why she did it. Please, and if I can find out where my daughter is today, I might be able to ask for forgiveness. Come on, Peter, I'd like to do it. Can you call Josh, please? But sweetheart, please, Peter. All right. Josh ran a small detective agency and was good friends with the police and the town's legal officials. Josh wasn't a very well-known person, but he was great at finding people. Peter, who was a lawyer, had met him on a case two years before. Since then, they had become good friends, and Josh had also met Juliana. Josh said yes right away when Peter asked him that night when he called him. Sure thing, buddy, but you need to send me a picture of the baby and the letter. If Juliana remembers anything about where she left the baby or anything else, that would be very helpful. I think she's carrying an address, but it's quite old. It's possible that the family has moved. Don't worry, Peter. Just send me whatever you have, and if I find out anything, I'll let you know. Thank you, Josh. That would be very important. After three months, Juliana had written down the address of where she'd left her child, but a new family had just moved in. Still, Josh didn't give up. He kept trying to find Rose and was doing everything he could. Peter and Juliana decided that if they couldn't find Rose, they would legally adopt her and raise her as their own. But then, one fateful morning, Josh called Peter and told him that he had finally found Rose. It turned out that she was a waitress in a Los Angeles cafe. Peter and Juliana flew to Los Angeles to meet Rose the next morning. When they got to the cafe, Juliana saw her right away. 
She had the same emerald green eyes, brown curls and a birthmark above her upper lip as she did when she was younger. Juliana brought the baby whom she and Peter had named Lily to Rose. She asked, Rose, with tears in her eyes, can, please, can we talk? When the girl saw Juliana with her baby, she turned around and stopped. What in the hell are you doing here? Just leave. It's not necessary to make a scene here. I just need to talk to you, Rose. Look, when her boss called, Rose had just started to talk. Look, I work here and I don't want to make a scene. Don't come back, get lost. I'm not interested in you. But Juliana wasn't ready to give up yet. She and Peter both sat at the cafe and waited for Rose to finish her shift. When they saw her leave the coffee shop, they went after her. Rose, please pay attention. Give me a chance and I won't bother you again. Juliana wept. Rose stopped and went backwards. Why do you want to get me? Nothing can be fixed. Please just go. Rose, Juliana said, hugging her. It's okay. Here I am. I know what's going on with you. I'm sorry I wasn't there when you needed me. Rose couldn't stop crying at this point. Everything is over. My whole life. My job. Everything. I am a loser. No, Rose, you're not. Please don't cry. Let's sit and talk, okay? Peter and Juliana took Rose to a park nearby and told her that they had found her with the help of a private investigator. Josh had told them a lot about Rose and they knew that she was seeing a therapist because she had been through something bad. Rose had moved to Los Angeles a year before to try to make a living as an actor. She fell in love with the casting director who promised her a part and she thought she was in love with him until she found out she was pregnant with his child. I wasn't in the right headspace. Everything was going wrong at the time, Rose said. When I was 18 years old, my parents told me I was adopted. People said that my mother had left me at the door. A year after I moved to Los Angeles, I got pregnant, but the man I loved left me. All of this was too much for me and I felt sad. So I started going to a therapist. I had a daughter, but as a way of getting even, I left her behind. Peter said, I'm sorry about what happened to you, Rose. What brought you to know about us? I knew the name of my real mother, so I did a search and found three women with that name. The first two didn't look like me at all, so I knew that the third one was my real mom. I found out where you live and left the baby at your front door. None of it is known to mom and dad. They think I'm still trying out for parts in LA, but I've almost given up and started working as a waitress because I'm too embarrassed to go home. Peter and Juliana both felt bad for the young girl and decided to help her through the bad time. They talked Rose into going back to her adoptive parents and they went with her. They told Rose's adoptive parents everything and all four elders agreed that the best thing they could do for both Lily and Rose was to give them a good family environment and forget about their past so the girls wouldn't feel abandoned or rejected. Because of this, they decided to take care of the girls as a family. Rose is doing much better in therapy and Lily now has two grandparents who love her.